Thanks, Riz. Thanks for the opportunity to come and have a chat with all of you. So, uh, I'm Juyin Ong from Energy Australia. Most of you here would know that Energy Australia, we are an energy retailer, but at the same time, we also generate energy. We generate about 5,000 megawatts um, through a mixture of uh, energy sources, coal, gas-fired, solar, battery, uh, as well as pump hydro coming online. So about 20% of our energy is renewable. I should have also said we have 1.6 million customers that is relying on us for the energy. So just quickly take you through that we're having a chat today more around the Energy Australia solutions for helping you transition your fleet to an EV fleet or putting community charging out there. A quick run through uh, from a EV sales perspective. Where is the market heading? Daniel went through quite a bit of that from a Victorian perspective. And uh, thanks to the EV Council, which Energy Australia is part of, we know that the uptake is real. If you look at the February numbers, 9.6% of uh, new car sales are now electric vehicles. And we are projecting that by 2027, you're going to have a million cars on the road, electric vehicles on the road. And we also know there are ambitious targets in place. Each state government has come out to say, by 2030, they are, they are targeting that 50% of new vehicle sales will be electric vehicle. What's standing in the way between that reaching that goal and where we are now? What's the charging infrastructure? What have we put into place? I recently uh, saw an LEK consulting report. So LEK Consulting, on an annual basis, runs a survey uh, of current EV drivers and future EV drivers, the ICE drivers who are currently thinking about transitioning but not quite getting there. One of the questions that's asked was, what's the barrier to adoption? Previous years, it's always been the cost of the vehicles. The last year's survey tells us it's no longer the cost, it's range anxiety. So you and I, we've got a lot of work to do to help them understand that range anxiety is not a problem because there are fast charges out there. And this is how we build it. So the challenges of building a resilient EV charging network. I used to work for a really good risk manager and he would always say, which each challenge that comes along, it's an opportunity. So at Energy Australia, we look at this from an energy solutions opportunity perspective. Today in the council, and I believe one of the councils before mentioned that about 20% of your greenhouse gas emissions is coming from transport. And for you to decarbonize, you and your community needs to start looking at how you can transition your fleets across. Today, you have your community driving to work, to schools, uh, your Uber drivers that drive through your LGA, they need fast charges. The business drivers like my husband who's consistently on the road, time is money to them. They need those fast charges deployed so that they can have a quick charge and off they go. On the other end of the spectrum, you then have your EV fleets, uh, your maintenance trucks, the stuff that goes out not doing as much mileage as a business driver, but the ones that will come back to the depot at the end of the day and has the whole night to charge. You have the two ends of the bookends. So your fast charger and potentially a slow AC charger in your depot. Regardless of whether it's a fast or a slow charger, you are looking at potentially a grid upgrade because your energy consumption patterns have changed. What, interestingly, um, over the weekend, my daughter was prepping for her debate. Unlike Daniel, my daughter is a lot older. <laughs> She's in high school, and one of the topics that she got was, EVs do more harm than good. 
she was not happy that she got that topic. <laughs> so her arguments, she had two arguments, right? The two arguments is that um, EVs, in order to charge them, you require energy. Energy is expensive. Her other argument was that with all that energy that needs to be sucked up into the vehicles, the grid will not cope. I looked at her and I went, well, my child, we need to have a conversation. <laughs> so my example to her was at home, we've got solar panels. Uh, and I told her, if your dad was charging his car right now, it was a 38 degree day, there was a lot of sun, that energy would be free. And on days that your dad is not at home, and if your mom and dad were smart enough to have installed a battery at home, all that energy would have been sucked into the battery. And when your dad comes home at night, he will be using that free energy. So you need to start considering, is solar, battery, EV charging a combination that you should be thinking of on your site? Currently, the energy infrastructure on your sites would have been built to cater for your current energy requirements. Very rarely is it oversized, which is why when you put EV chargers in the ground, that equation changes. So let's not talk grid capacity just yet. Let's look at whether solar and battery can help you on that journey. Um, yes, I did mention solar, battery, EV chargers. This all costs money. There is a lot of capital investment required. Even from an Energy, uh, Energy Australia perspective, we are transitioning from the coal-fired power plants to battery storage to pumped hydro. We can't do this ourselves. The transition is happening, but the transition costs money. So we work with capital partners who help us on those projects. Similarly, Council will potentially be looking for capital partners to help you on this journey. Key to all this is community engagement. As we work with the councils, mostly in South Australia at the moment, uh, as we work with the councils, once we've worked through what that concept design would look like, we then put that in front of the community. Get their feedback. Get them understand from their point of view what they see are the potential challenges. We've had a number of uh, questions come back from the community consultation that we did. Questions ranging from who's going to get access to those charges? How do I use those charges? Are those charges going to be available 24-7? And because we look at a solar and battery combination, there have been questions arising about the batteries as well. What is the impact of the batteries to the site? So those are just some of the questions uh, that we've received. Okay, this is how Energy Australia looks at the whole ecosystem and how we work through each site. It's an end-to-end -end value chain proposition. First thing we do is to look at it from a planning perspective. What are you intending to do with the site? How much energy are you currently already using on the site? Um, what are you doing with those fleets? What kind of vehicles are on those fleet? What is the energy consumption of those vehicles? From there, we can then work out how much energy you will require, and then we work through what the engineering will require. Are we talking solar, battery, EV chargers only? Or are you using that much energy that we have to go to the distributors and ask for a grid upgrade? It's all possible. Uh, but bear in mind, and I think some of you have seen from the previous presentations, a grid upgrade means it's possibly a longer time. Um, putting charges in the ground requires assessing what sort of charges are out in the market. There is a lot of them. Um, will help you with that impartial assessment. I'm not here to sell charges. We're charger agnostic. And it's not just about the charges. It's also about the software that you put in load management software, your charge management software. And if this charger is for the public, what sort of build point operator are you going to put in there? These are all the things we consider, and these are the recommendations we put forth. Once all of that has been decided, stuff goes into the ground, stuff goes on the roof. 
it all goes in, and then it, we don't just walk away. Um, it's about the ongoing maintenance, because nobody wants to rock up to the charger and find that it's dead. So we then factor in the proactive and the reactive maintenance that is required. Pricing. This is Energy Australia's bread and butter. Currently, the way you use energy at your council sites, most likely, mostly through the day. And then when you go home, not much is left on. You might have a couple of fridges in the offices. Your energy use is high during the day, not much during the night. As you transition to an EV fleet, I suspect a lot of your vehicles will be coming back into the depot and filling it up through the night, which means your load profile completely changes. Talk to your retailer, make sure they are customising a tariff for you. We are starting to do that at Energy Australia. And that last bit about orchestration, I'll actually move to a different slide on this one. So we know with solar and battery, it reduces your greenhouse gas emissions, uh, it lowers your operational costs because that energy is almost free now, and it lowers your grid requirements. What we haven't discussed is the ability to trade on those batteries. For a lot of the sites that we put in for councils, we put in a half a megawatt battery as well. The way the energy market works, it's no different from a marketplace, demand, supply, and as demand outstrips supply, prices could skyrocket to $16,000 per megawatt hour. So instead of using that energy from the battery to sell at 60 cents per kilowatt hour at your EV charges, you could sell it for a lot more by putting it into the energy market. Just something to consider, and that's how most people commercialize that, the battery that they have on site. Um, the next couple of slides are examples on a council that we're working with in South Australia. Um, we know the South Australian community, very progressive. They love their renewables. There are eight sites that we're working on, but for now, active work is only happening on four while they work through what the other four sites could or could not look like. So if you look here, uh, that's the recreation center. It's all of that in yellow. We, it already has solar, but we'll be putting more solar on. Maximize the roof space, half a megawatt of battery on the site. And for those of you that squint really hard, you can see that there is stage one and stage two from an EV charging perspective. The logic behind that is the first charger you put in will not be the last charger that you put in. Test and learn as you go. So in this case, we're putting in one charger and over time, if the need grows, we are building the infrastructure so that we can come back, thread the cables through, put the charges in. I'm only cutting concrete ones. Nobody wants that disruption on their site. So I'm cutting the concrete ones, laying whatever conduits I need, so that when I come back later, the impact to the community is minimal. Similarly, with this site, you can see it's got massive car park spots. I would love for it to be one day full of EV chargers. Maybe not quite yet. Um, we're planning stage one, stage two on this site as well, uh, and solar and battery as well. And if you see that one, it's going to be a one megawatt hour battery. All very exciting times. The opportunities are massive for all of us. That's all I had for you. Uh, if you've got questions, hit me up later. Otherwise, thank you. <laughs>